This week we are moving on to module 5 balance and if you've taken a look at the module you may have noticed that there is a new type of assignment that's included in the module. It's formal critique Jack and Jill. So far this semester we've been working on smaller projects. They're called creativity practices and they're designed as one week projects where we start and finish them in one week and then as you post your artwork I've encouraged you to provide feedback in the discussion to your peers and to your classmates. Starting with module five, I'm sorry, module four, uh, instead of having a creativity practice, we had a project called Major Creative Project Jack and Jill. Major creative projects are multi-week projects or multi-module projects, they span multiple modules. Um, and when we have a major creative project, instead of informally providing feedback to our classmates, in the very next module after that project is due, there will be a formal critique assignment. Since this is the first formal critique assignment, I would like to review the expectations for you for the assignment and review the scoring rubric that's attached to the assignment. The scoring rubric allows you to see how you'll be graded before you even start your project. So it's a good idea to always read through the instructions for the assignment and view the rubric. Let's start by reviewing the requirements for the formal critique. I'm not going to read through every single line item, so please make sure that you're doing that on your own. But I do want to review the important highlights. First, in Art 1120, we are focusing on learning about the design process. Instead of coming up with one idea and saying that's the best idea that I've ever had and it's the best idea anyone will ever have, we are focusing on coming up with multiple concepts refining those concepts into rough ideas, and then creating finished formalized designs, specifically designs that meet client needs. We are no longer creating artwork for art's sake, we are creating artwork that meets an objective. As part of the process of getting better at, at designing, at better at improving our work and improving our designs, we need to engage in, in a feedback process, in a constructive feedback process. And in the art world, we call that critiquing. In your textbook, we outline a formal process for critiquing. That process requires us to identify what the objectives of a project were, how the current art or design meets those objectives, and then also allows an area for us to provide suggestions for improvement. In order to be able to provide formal feedback to each other, you must first post your own artwork. And so when you're reading the requirements for the formal critique assignment, you'll see that you must post your artwork and a summary of your process to create that artwork by Tuesday of the week that we're working on the assignment. In order to successfully meet the requirements of posting your artwork, you must make sure that you format it in a web file format and post it on a file sharing website that will allow you to embed your artwork in a Canvas discussion. I do not want to have to download a file or click a link to be redirected, so make sure that you practice this um, earlier in the semester so that when you get to the formal critique it just embeds naturally. Once your artwork is posted below your artwork in the same post, I would like you to provide a summary of your process. That's at least two to three paragraphs, five to seven sentences per paragraph, Think of it as writing a one-page paper. In your summary, you can include a short description of what the assignment was and how you followed the design process to create the final design that you're presenting. I want to know what you liked best about the project. What did you enjoy the most? What did you learn the most from? I also want to know what challenges you incurred. Were there any difficulties because something didn't work right or you thought it would work and you had to go back and fix it? I'm of the opinion that we learn most when things go wrong and ha we have to troubleshoot. So I'm most interested in hearing about any challenges that you occurred. If you had more time, what would you do differently? How would you improve your design? And then last, do you have any final thoughts or takeaways after completing the assignment that you would like to share with the class? After you post your artwork by Tuesday evening, you have until Saturday to provide feedback to three of your peers. Feedback should be presented following the structure for critiquing that's outlined in our textbook. And that is to provide a description of the project you were reviewing, an analysis of how that project meets the project or the objective of the assignment, 
And then in the third paragraph, we can provide feedback on whether or not we feel that the design has achieved the goals of the project. Can we call it done? Is there, is there anything that needs to be improved? We can provide feedback on ideas that we have for improving the artwork. And you can also list any questions you have for the artist. When you are providing feedback to your peers, I know it's a difficult process. It's difficult to tell someone else that they haven't met the requirements. But if you focus on using uh, words that encourage students to get better and use directive words that specifically address the project at hand, the requirements for the project, the objective of the audience that you're trying to meet, you can stay away from words like I really like or I don't like because it's really not about what you like or what you don't like. It's about whether or not the assignment meets the criteria for what we're trying to accomplish. So my suggestions when providing feedback are to be honest, but be kind. Uh, students know when you're lying to them. So if you tell someone that it's wonderful and that they created the best Jack and Jill assignment you've ever seen, and they know that they've only spent five minutes on the project and they weren't really happy with the results, they'll see right through your comment. So be honest. Sometimes they're waiting to hear that someone else recognizes that something isn't quite right and needs to be fixed. Be straightforward, but don't be mean. We're trying to help each other get better. Part of this class is getting used to hearing that things are not finished. They need to be improved and to learn new ideas to accomplish your goals. And then also stay focused. We critique based on the design problem at hand. Don't go off on a tangent about your personal opinion about the color blue and how you don't think blue should be used because it's overused in X, Y, and Z design. If the color blue meets the objective of the assignment, then we have to accept that it meets the guidelines. However, if you are designing something for a young girl's room and you would like to say that blue is not typically a color that's associated with baby girls, you can do that. Now, someone else might argue with you and say um, that the goal of the assignment was to create a progressive design that's unique that no one has seen before. And by switching the colors, having the juxtaposition of blue instead of pink for a baby girl, that might meet the project object objective. But whatever your opinions are, you should focus on providing feedback based on whether or not what you're reviewing meets the project requirements at hand. So long story short, focus on the requirements and not your personal opinions. So let's take a look at the scoring rubric. A lot of students will overlook this next step when beginning a project. You should always read through the requirements of the assignment, but if you click on the three dots in the top right hand corner of the page, you can show the rubric for the assignment. Every assignment that I give you in this course has a grading rubric attached to it. Your grade is compiled by the rubric for this assignment. And then the rubric takes the points earned and dumps them into your grade book. And so whatever you see on this rubric is how you'll be scored and graded, not only for this project, but in this whole class. Let's see if it will let me zoom in a little bit here. Let's review the rubric. I, I'm not gonna go line item through line item with every single rubric that we do, uh, we'll use in Art 1120, but it's important to see how a rubric works. On the far left-hand side, I have criteria, a list of criteria. These basically out align to the expectations that we just reviewed for the project requirements. So you'll be graded based on your ability to properly post your finished artwork and to provide a self-reflection of your process. Whether or not you provide feedback to your students, uh, your classmates, and how thorough that feedback is, and whether or not you make your initial post and your peer feedback post on time. In order to receive all of the points for posting your finished design properly, and this is an either or category, you either meet expectations or you are below expectations. In order to meet expectations, your finished design or designs must be posted and easily accessible to everyone in the class. They must be presented in a clear and professional way. This means that I need to be able to see them. If you post them on Google Drive, and you set the privacy to private and no one can access your images, we won't be able to see them to provide feedback. 
One thing I want to point out is that you could post your artwork and it can be visible to the class and still have areas for improvement on your posting finished designs category. If you are presenting dirty, blurry, or disorganized artwork. After you finish your design, you're not finished. You need to still present your artwork in a professional way. So when you're photographing your artwork, photograph it straight on, either from above or hang it on the wall and photograph it. I don't want to see your dirty clothes in the background. I don't want the camera to move when you're photographing your artwork. Don't take your artwork in a dark room so the whole um, workspace looks dark and sh has shadows across it. The second category is your self-reflection. In order to receive full credit for your self-reflection, you must include the three paragraphs that we talked about and they must address a description of your design process, what you enjoyed most about the project, what you found challenging or difficult about the project. I want to hear what you would do differently if you had more time. And if, if you have additional feedback, you can provide that to the class. If you submit a written reflection, but it does not meet all of those requirements, you will receive partial credit, 50% credit. And then if you don't submit a reflection, you will not receive any credit. When providing feedback to your classmates, you have two categories on the rubric that you'll receive points for. The first is whether or not you provided the feedback. This category is worth six points. You essentially get two points per student. So if you provide feedback to one student, no matter what that feedback is, you get two points. If you provide it to two students or three students, you'll receive four and six points. This category has nothing to do with the content of what you are posting. So if you provide feedback, you can receive a few points for providing that feedback. But if we look at the next item in the rubric, you can see that you can provide feedback, but if it's not thorough feedback, you won't receive full credit. So in order to receive thorough feedback, uh, full credit for thorough feedback, so 10 points in this line item for the scoring rubric, you must provide three paragraphs of feedback to each of the three students. You need to identify the three steps of the design process, that uh, the critiquing process that we've outlined. Make sure you identify in the first paragraph, what has a student done? What are you seeing? In the second paragraph, identify how they have met the expectations of the project. And in the third paragraph, you will provide your analysis and feedback and your recommendations for improvement. If you do not provide thorough feedback to all three students, but you have provided thorough feedback to at least one student, you will receive partial credit or 50% credit. In order to receive 10 points in this category, you must provide thorough feedback to all three students. The last two categories in the scoring rubric are listed as zero points, and that's because it's important to get your work in on time. So everything in Art 1120 is expected to be submitted on time it is especially important for critiquing assignments to be submitted on time. It defeats the purpose of posting your initial artwork on Sunday night if it was due on Tuesday the week before because everyone has submitted their feedback by Saturday, which means if you submit on Sunday, you're not getting any feedback. And so what will happen in the last two categories is if you, if you get your work in on time, I'll hit full marks on the left-hand side. You've met expectations, but it doesn't add to your grade. If you did not submit by Tuesday night uh, or you do not submit your feedback by Saturday night, I will mark that you have received no marks in this category or you are below expectations and then I will manually remove 10% from the grade. And so this assignment is worth 30 points and so if you submit your initial post wrong, I will give you negative 3 points in this category or if you submit your peer review feedback late, I will enter negative 3 for the feedback submission. I would like everyone to review the requirements for the critiquing assignment and to take a look at that scoring rubric. If you have any questions, please visit me during office hours. They're every Monday, Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. via the chat tab inside our course.